Good morning. Very warm welcome, everyone, to St. Gabriel's Church. We are good, and it, God is good. We are glad that you have chosen to join us today as we worship the Lord together and have fellowship. Let us pray. Lord of all, as we gather to worship you, we ask for hearts open to your presence. Fill this place with your spirit and our souls with your peace, O oh God. And let every song, every prayer, every word spoken glorify you and draw us closer in communion with you and each other. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. Over to the music team for the opening hymn. Let us rise. Let us come together just to focus on Him and to remind ourselves that we are all made to praise Him. I was made to praise You I was made to glorify Your name In every circumstance To find a chance to thank You I was made to love You I was made to worship Worship at your feet and to obey you, Lord. I was made for you. I will always praise you. Oh, I will always. to praise you. I was made to praise you. I was made to glorify your name in every circumstance to find a chance to thank you. to love you oh, I was made to worship at your feet and to obey you Lord I was made for you I was made Purity. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Collect for Apostle Matthew. 
Lord Jesus, you called Matthew from collecting taxes to become your apostle and evangelist. Grant us the grace to forsake all covetous desires and inordinate love of riches that we may follow you as he did and proclaim to the world around us the good news of your salvation. For with the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign, one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Acts chapter 2, verses 21. Everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Come then, let us confess our sins to the one who is faithful to forgive. Come then, let us adore the one who is mighty to save. Together the general confession. Merciful and gracious God, our hearts cry out for you to make us whole again. We have sinned against you. We have been jealous, possessive, ambivalent, and impulsive. We have not heeded your word. Help us to glorify you in all times and in all places. As our souls thirst for your living waters, quench our needs and satisfy our love, that we may come back to you and be sent forth to fill the world with your mercy and grace. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, who is at work within us. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by His Spirit, and raise you to life, a new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now put our hearts and our hands together and commit our children and young people to God. Let us pray together. Almighty God, your word is a lamb unto our feet and a light unto our path. Help our children and young people to keep their eyes fixed on you and fill them with understanding and confidence. Strengthen their faith and help them to live according to your will and to grow into Christ's light maturity. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Shall we now all rise for the sharing of peace? And now may the peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us greet one another and welcome one another in the peace of our Lord. It was my cross you bore So I could live In the freedom you died for And now my life is yours And I will sing of your goodness forevermore Worthy is your name, Jesus You deserve the praise Worthy is your name Worthy is your name, Jesus you deserve the praise, worthy is your name. And now my shame is gone, I stand amazed, your love undeniable. Your grace goes on and on, and I will sing of your goodness forevermore. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name, Jesus. Praise, worthy is your name. 
Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy. Worthy is your name. Be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fill this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fill this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fill this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fill this place. You alone deserve our praise. Sweet. 
to see you. I want to see you. Yes, Jesus. This is my desire. To honor you, Lord, with all my heart, I worship you. sing of the goodness of God His goodness in our life in many ways, no matter big or small God is good all the time
of the goodness of God. Cause all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing. Of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. In darkest night, you are close like no other. I've known you as a father known you as a friend and I have lived in the goodness of God and all my life you have been faithful yes Jesus and all my life you have been so so With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, is running after me. Your goodness is running after, is running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. All my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will see of the goodness of God. Oh, and all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so with every breath that I am able, for I will see of the goodness of God. Oh, I will see of the goodness of God. Oh, I will see of the goodness of God. Oh, I will see. faithful. We will sing of your goodness every day, oh God. Every breath that we have, oh God, Lord. Yes, because your goodness is running after us. Thank you, oh God. We surrender all to you, oh God. You have been so, so good. We give you all the glory and honor and everything we have, oh God. For Lord, thank you. Thank you, O oh God, Lord Jesus, that we can honor you, O oh God. We can glorify your name, O oh God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your goodness. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Yes, with every breath that we are able, O oh God, to sing of your goodness. 
Thank you, God. Lord, we come to you asking for greater discernment, O oh God. Your word says that if any of us lacks wisdom, we should ask you, who gives generously to all without finding fault. We ask of you, O oh Lord, to continually deepen our relationship with you to enable us to receive divine wisdom and guidance in our decision making. Give us, O oh Lord, a discerning heart and mind. Help us to see situations, people, and opportunities through your eyes and not be judgmental. Heavenly Father, giver of life and health, we thank you for your peace which surpasses all understanding. Thank you that your peace guards our hearts and minds as we live in Christ Jesus. Lord, we want to commit at this moment, Brother Wilson, into your hands, O oh God, who is in coma. Though he is awake now, O oh Lord, but he is still very weak, O oh Lord, in the ICU, O oh God. Lord, we pray, O oh Lord, that your healing power will work in his life, O oh Lord. And we pray, O oh God, that you will heal him and heal him completely, O oh God. Lord, we pray, O oh God, that you will bless him with a team of medical staff who will take good care of him, O oh God. And eventually, O oh Lord, because of your goodness, because of your healing, O oh God, he will be transferred to the normal world. Lord, yes, we commit, commit him into your hands, O oh God, trusting and believing that by your stripes, Brother Wilson will be healed, O oh God. Thank you, O oh God. Lord, we pray that you will strengthen us and teach us to maintain balance, to avoid burnout, and navigate the stresses of our life daily, O oh God. Comfort and relieve those challenged by serious and chronic mental, physical, and emotional illnesses. Please guard our path through life and make our enemies be at peace with us. Lord, we pray for strength in the face of adversity. When trials come our way, strengthen our faith and empower us to persevere. Fill us with bonus to stand firm when everything around us is shaken. Help us to fix our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. We ask that you give us the courage and bonus to share your truth and the gospel with those around us especially to our pre-believer family members. We pray that those you place in our path would see your great love for them in the truth that we share. Accept these prayers, dear Lord, for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Together, prayer for St. Gabriel's Church. God, our gracious Heavenly Father, may you pour your Holy Spirit upon our hearts and bless the mission and ministry of St. Gabriel's. Assist us to faithfully and sincerely love one another, care for the poor and helpless, and witness to your saving love to all. Give us grace to be the servant of others, as Jesus was the servant of all. We ask this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Ministry of the Word. The first reader, reading is taken from Psalms chapter 33, verses 18 through 22. Congregation, please read the verses in yellow together. Psalms 33. But the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, on those whose hope is in his unfailing love. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Our 
May your unfailing love be with us, Lord, even as we put our hope in you. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Second reading is taken from the book of James, chapter 5, reading from verses 13 to 15 and 19 to 20. Verse 13. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If, you have, if they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Verse 19, My brothers and sisters, if one of you should wander from the truth, and someone should bring that person back, remember this, whoever turns a sinner from the error of their way will save them from death and cover over a multitude of sins. This is the word of the Lord. Church, please stand for the reading of the gospel, which is taken from the book of Matthew, chapter 9, verses 9 through 13. To Christ our Savior. As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, he told him, and Matthew got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, Many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, Why does the teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. This is the gospel of Christ. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you. Bless us, Lord, as we ponder upon your words. Christ name we pray. Amen. Very good morning to you all. My greatest supporter, thanks. <laughs> uh, I think he's excited. All right, so far we have, uh, how many di disciples we have uh, gone through? Five, right? Peter and his brother Andrew, James and John, and the other James the Lesser. Uh, I hope you're able to capture some of the characters uh, that uh, I've shared with you. Well, today we're going to look at one more character, a uh, very interesting character. His name is Matthew. Uh, um, so Matthew is uh, interesting in many, many ways because Matthew is the most notorious of all the character. Right? You know, he's a tax collector. Uh, and tax collector, you know that uh, they are part of the biggest sinner group. Nobody likes them, right? Ostracized and disliked. And yet Jesus called him and said, follow me, and he followed him. Uh, have you ever wondered why? In my mind, why did not Jesus choose him to be a treasurer instead? Ask Judas. He is a tax collector, Right? He knows money much better than everybody else, and yet Jesus did not choose him to be a treasurer. James, curious, huh? Asking a pastor to be a, you know, to be a treasurer. They, they know little, little about money. This is one of the mysteries, right? Anyway, the word Matthew means gift from God, gift from Yahweh. Right? And we know that he wrote the gospel, the first gospel that appears in the New Testament, and it's uh, very different from the other apostles. Probably he's 
the most educated. You got to know something about education to count money properly. Eh? And he certainly was not a popular man. And many people thought that he is very unworthy to be chosen to be a follower. Certainly in the gospel, it was mentioned that because he worked for the Romans as a tax collector. And as you know, tax collectors are considered to be traitors, the worst. They're greedy, they're corrupted, and certainly you don't want to hang around with them and you don't want them to be around with you. So tax collectors are like that. It's not that they're collecting income tax. Huh? Those days, I don't think there's any income tax. But he works on the basis of, uh, you know, when merchandise are exchanged, import and export, so he do all the tax, right? He charge the people uh, whatever necessary in order to give to the Romans. And of course, uh, you have control over things like that. So if people want to pay less, they give you behind the pocket money, lah. Uh, give you some bribery so they collect less ta taxes. Uh, or you may charge more if the guy is a bit. Uh, you don't like the guy, you charge him more and you recover your. The capital you put in. Now, those days, it's just like business. Huh? You want business? Well, you have to put in a bit. The person that gives the best bit, you get the business. That's how the Roman works. Huh? Okay, uh, you know, business are all like that. Huh? Uh, so he's like that. Huh? Either he makes a lot of money from you or from anywhere. Huh? So he must really certainly be a rich guy, prosperous guy. So he's a person certainly who loves money. Anybody here don't like money? Don't love money? <laughs> Tell me who don't want money? I want money. Certainly I want money to build the church. Anybody tell you that, no, no need money, la, I can pull up this, la. no need money, la, you can... No. I tell you, he's not telling the truth. La. Everybody needs money. Uh, I'm sure that if you search our heart, everybody loves money, to, or rather to have more money, isn't it? Why? Because uh, money is not just an essential thing. Money gives you options. And now we are going to do the building. Right? Initially cost going to five, 5 million and then now to 3 million and some people want less. That's why you can do it everything for 1 million or so. Correct? Of course, uh, the less you have, the less things you put in. Uh. If you put in a lot of money, then you can have better things, better AV, better qualities, better things. So money is something that everybody needs and wants. And certainly, here it talks about Matthew. The guy loves money. Otherwise, he wouldn't be a tax collector. You must love money and want to be prosperous. Otherwise, you would not go into business. Nobody go into business to do charity. Right? Charity come after that, you know. A bit here, a bit there, he give. End of the day, business is about making profit. And this is Matthew. Right, so you must start off with this uh, very interesting thing about Matthew. He's a person who loves money. That is for sure. Right? He desires prosperity because prosperity will buy you the finer things in life. You want to change the car? Right? Right. So on the lower level, Proton and simple car, okay. You have more money than you took something Honda and all that. And you really on a higher right? you think of Mercedes and BM, right? And those are better cars, definitely for sure. And you have the money, you go for that. So Matthew is a guy who loves money. And today, Matthew is considered as a patron saint of bankers and accountants. He's a patron saint. Eh? Uh, because he dealt with money as a tax collector. And Matthew has a desire to be a prosperous man. Okay, before he became a saint, he was a, pros he de a desire. Why? Because prosperity means more options in life. Especially for the better and more quality things in life. You don't always have to go to the hawker store by the roadside. You go to the finer restaurant and eat. Isn't it? If you don't have money, then mama store. Huh? So this desire is inherent, you can see in Matthew, because he was a tax collector for the Roman Empire. He is very money conscious, he's calculative, and he's exact. Every accountant is like that. They are very exact in every sense. Small, one cent, two cent, important. Otherwise, won't balance. They have to be calculative because you're not dealing with grammars, you're not dealing with essays, you're dealing with actual figures. And therefore, in church, if you have a very good accountant who is very, very calculative, very exact, you've got a problem there. 
because they don't release money so easily. I know churches get into conflict because when they do mission work, and this guy, you know, mission work is such that it's like chop chop here and there. Eh? And then if this uh, treasurer is not so understanding, then you have big issue there. Eh? Uh, people don't, normal people doesn't work that way. But treasurers are all like that. Eh? So Matthew is like that. He is very exact. And yet, and yes, he's a person that extorted from his own Jewish people to get rich and to gain possession. Um, while doing so, he also showed that he wanted the best in life and willing to do anything to get it. Hmm? That's the love of money you do. Lah. Anything, you, they will bypass all kinds of things in order to get that. But, of course, every one of us who reads Matthew Gospel knows that money was very important to him, but later on, it became not important, not so important. And later on, you realize that what was important was believing in and living as a follower of Christ. And Matthew helped us to remember that it is our faith that will make a person truly rich. That is after that. Nah? But he began life not like that. Right? He's a person who is possessive and loves money. And he made the best use of the situation at that time. He was, you can say, an opportunist. Right? He exploited the tragedy of the people. So that time, what can you do? There's nothing much you can do. Collect tax. Lah. <laughs> Someone has to do the dirty job. Myself, me. And then benefit myself and the people around there. And that's what Matthew is. Like today, you know, uh, people are opportunists. Huh? They look at the situation. Uh, you may not be at that level, but uh, well, at least there's something there for me. So I must not make use of the best situation and make something of it. That is Matthew. Huh? And I'm sure that he's a person who can accept ridicules and scorn. Right? Matthew is an apostle with perseverance in his notoriety. Right, he was willing to endure ridicules and scorn to fulfill his desire. Of course, before he left everything to follow Jesus, he was a tax collector, and I said earlier, he was a corrupted fellow, greedy, a nasty scoundrel. People don't like him. Uh, at first glance, you would think Jesus must be not quite right, bad choice to choose a person of that history. Right? Uh, and then uh, Matthew must have endured ridicules and, and scorn from his fellow Jewish countrymen uh, to get what he wanted. He was disliked by society. He didn't have any much friend, maybe among the group of friends. Among themselves, I'm sure there are also competition. Right? Among these businessmen, I'm sure they also try to undercut one another. So probably he's a lonely man, but he don't care. I just need to do what I need to do. So to succeed in life, you have to do that now. Brutally independent, lonely. Who cares what you say about me? I'm going to do what I want to do, need to do. That's Matthew. Huh? Otherwise, you cannot be a successful businessman, tax collector. You hear too much of people's criticism and suddenly you back off. People don't love me. But to him, who cares whether you love me or not? I'm going to make my money. You owe me, you pay me. That is what Matthew is. And he don't care. He just do what he needs. So you need to look behind huh, who he is before that. On the other hand, he must be... In when he become a follower of Jesus, he must also be ridiculed and mocked by the other, other people, right? For making such a foolish decision to follow a wandering preacher like Jesus, what do you get? It's really a dumb decision and stupid to leave a lucrative, prosperous job to follow this person, uncertain future, and talk about suffering. Imagine, huh? So just imagine for a while, you're having a wonderful job, or your children is a medical specialist earning five figures per month. A very good job. Then Sally tells you, Dad, Mom, I decided to follow Jesus. I want to be a missionary. Where? Ah, go to Myanmar. Go to Somali. I think if your son is going to come and tell you that, you say, I think this is ridiculous. You have such a good job. and uh, Then you want to leave and go and do the work of God. I think immediately we come there, right? Uh, very, very few people will leave their great job to do that work. Unless uh, nothing else to do, you know, you're going, okay, like, be a missionary. But by and large, Matthew left his prosperous, lucrative, tax collecting job to follow Jesus. I'm sure make me make fun of him, isn't it? Today we look at people who serve God and say, oh, this is good, this is great, uh, wonderful, and we are not really that poor off, lah. 
now uh, we are have what they call com, com, reasonable comparison. So pastors are not really that poor nowadays. Those days, yes, like early days, huh, when they're doing that proper, then the church will provide maintenance for them and little housing and still going on. Lah. But today, I think so much better. You are not leaving anything behind to be that poor anymore. Early days during uh, 30, 40 years, 50 years ago, yes, hmm? but not today. Right? But even today, if you're going to leave a big job to take on the become a pastor, so not really that, uh, the good option. Right? The rather that you do a better, uh, the possibility of uh, getting more money. Ah, that was Matthew. Eh? And yet Matthew initially left, uh, continued with his dirty job. And when he followed Jesus, I'm sure that he would have also been ridiculed and yet he persisted on. That is Matthew. You, you see the great character of this, this person? He's willing to do the difficult part and yet he's willing to let it go when the time comes. And probably that's what Jesus chose him, right? Uh, something we can learn from him. And I'm sure Matthew has an open mind and very teachable. If proven wrong, he was willing to change cost in order to go a better direction. So he is not kind of a one-way ticket. Huh? Even though Matthew sacrificed everything, including his reputation, to gain what he wanted, he was not a close-minded person, a lock into one path of life. He seems to have seen possibility, right? Because he's constantly studying the horizon and looking at situation around to find something better. And as a tax collector, he may be looking for something better in life, maybe the chief tax collector to go up the scale. Among the group also, there's different hierarchy. Eh? The amount of tax you are allowed to collect also depends on the level, right? If you're collecting on fishermen, and that's a level. If you're collecting from import, export, this level. If you're collecting on a higher level, you see there's a different level? So you start from a lower ground, and then you go up, go up. Now, he also surveying the possibility of going up uh, the tax collector ladder. Of course, we know that when Jesus came along and called him to follow him, and the Bible only give you, tell you that, that Matthew left everything behind, including his wealth, for something that is not so valuable, but far more valuable in terms of eternal life. Right? So Jesus looked at him and said, Matthew, follow me. And you must see the dynamics behind. Eh? Then Matthew got up and followed him. And Matthew is no longer the same person. He's changed inside. But his character is still the same. But he's changed, he's transformed inside. He's, he's persevering, the way he looks at things begin to be redirected. He lived behind his table, he lived behind his money, and he lived behind his past. Uh, before he had been collecting taxes and making money, now he gives back what he has taken, like uh, Zacchaeus, remember, I give back. Whatever I've taken, cheat, I give back. And now with Jesus, he get up, and what did he give? Apart from money, he gave up himself to others. So the encounter with Jesus was transformative, right? Something changed in his heart. The hard-heartedness is changed, not become a softy. His hard-heartedness was redirected to a greater purpose. So Matthew became a person who began to develop in his life. And Matthew certainly was educated, but he improved his knowledge in pursuit of something greater. And Matthew's accounts of Jesus is well searched. And there's important references to the Old Testament that he, he gave in, that he, he studied. Of course, Matthew had been a wide witness of Jesus' life, but as an educated Jew, Matthew knew that Jesus could only be the long-awaited Messiah. And he fulfilled the Old Testament prophecies concerning the Messiah. He must have studied the Scripture in order to come to that conclusion. So it's not one flash, uh, flash in the pen, suddenly he realized that oh, Jesus is the Messiah. No. He studied and he knew. And from his studied and rational that Jesus indeed is the Messiah. So Matthew did not rest on blind faith, but rather he studied to make sure that what who is following and what he's writing is a real thing. And after that, 
and he's sure that what he's studying is real, he circulated the accounts to other people so that they could be sure that Jesus was indeed the Messiah. So Matthew wrote the first gospel for the Jewish people, not for Gentiles, for Jewish people to convince them, especially those who come to know and see Jesus as a Messiah, to convince them that the Jewish believers, that indeed this is the Messiah. So he wanted the audience to know that Jesus was a Messiah that God has promised to send, to send, to save people, especially the Jews. Right? Later part, uh, Luke and John and all that then begin to uh, propagate it and tell that it's going, going to go beyond the Jewish people and to go to the Gentile as well. So Matthew's Gospel makes it very clear that Jesus is a fulfillment of everything that they've been waiting for, the prophets in the Old Testament. So when you read Matthew, it is always have a very Jewish touch to it, right? It's not with a genealogy, uh, to establish uh, the genealogy of Jesus. So his uh, evangelist also tells us to share, us, to share with us the Beatitudes with the readers. His gospel testifies and reports how Jesus will be the truly blessed one and bring to the world the kingdom of God, right? And he requires those who follow Jesus that a new law that Jesus comes to bring. And Jesus preached, and Matthew preached the gospel that Jesus asked the disciples to do so. So, Matthew rechannel his energy to the greater purpose of God. And he left behind a very important legacy, right? The legacy that others after him might believe that Jesus was the saviour of the world. And he left the written record of Jesus' life and work, the Gospel of Matthew. And that's a very positive legacy that he left behind. And he wrote the Gospel so that today, followers of Christ were able to look at it and truly believe in it. So if a Jew were to read the Gospel of Matthew, then they could identify, yes, yeah, there's a connection there. Yeah, you start thinking that Jesus, maybe he could be the Messiah and start thinking about that. So it makes it very clear that Jesus is a fulfillment of everything said by the prophets in the Old Testament. And he wrote about Jesus' incarnation and his Gospel make it clear that Jesus was indeed truly God, indeed truly man. So today as we journey and we look at Matthew and the rest of the disciples, uh, maybe he's telling us many ways that he invites us, right, to follow Jesus, that Jesus helps us overcome our preconceptions, our reluctance. He's telling us that Jesus sat with the Republicans, uh, Republicans and the sinners, that Jesus' love goes before us and he foresees our needs, right? He foresees what is beyond our appearances, beyond our sin, beyond our failures and unworthiness. And Matthew is telling us that he sees beyond our place in life, that we are all born with the dignity as the sons and daughters of God. But all those things could be overshadowed by our sense of unworthiness, our, our sinfulness in the depths of our soul. Well, Jesus foresee in Matthew and overcomes that, helps us overcome that. That Jesus indeed truly came to seek out those who are, who are feeling unworthy before God, unworthy of others, and invite us to look at Him, right? Allow us, if to allow us to Jesus look at us and to gaze at us as we just sit at the table, just like Matthew. One fine day, just sitting down there collecting taxes and probably when he was doing nothing in particular important, just sitting down and thinking, and Jesus walked down and tell him, Matthew, follow me. Did he follow Jesus immediately? I'm sure it's not the first time. He must have heard of Jesus. He must have seen Jesus. He must have experienced a little bit of what Jesus did. And he must be thinking about that, and then Jesus one fine day passed by and just looked at him, right, and gazed at him and just told him, follow me. He may have followed immediately, or may, maybe he's gone back and then start to think. But the important thing is he followed Jesus, and that look of Jesus can become our joy and our hope, as Matthew did that. 
So through the scripture of Matthew, uh, we find that um, God meets us, right? God looks at us with the eyes of forgiveness, with the eyes of mercy and compassion. So I hope that we can all journey again and again and look at the disciples and how Jesus calls them and maybe one of the disciples, that's how God calls us as well. And I hope that uh, you can be excited to read the, uh, the Bible. And the most fundamental for us Christians is how God speaks to us. And God speaks to us most directly through what? Through the Bible, right? The only way that God speaks to us directly is through the Bible. And of course, through our prayers, through our meditation, through our thinking. And I do hope that you will be excited to read the Bible. So I put up here a little exercise. I hope you take it and try it out. Huh? Uh, there are 16 books here. See whether you can jot down all the books. And tell me if anything missing there. There's at least two books missing from there. Okay, try to find out. Huh? Okay? Uh, do with the children. Uh. It's quite fun, actually. And there are some questionnaires at the back, and you can do a little bit of study and uh, take back home. By the way, do you know the, all the books by heart? All the Bible by heart? New Testament? Okay, let's recite them. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts of the Apostles, Romans, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrew, James, 1 Peter, 2 Peter, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, Jude, and Revelation. How many all got correct? <laughs> How many got wrong? <laughs> okay, it's not that difficult. Huh? And one of the secret, when you cannot sleep, one of the secrets learn to do is recite the Bible. I can show you, but I think get to the end of Revelation, you'll be fast asleep. <laughs> you try that. When you cannot sleep, recite the Bible by heart. You want to try do it backward? Revelation, Jude, 3 John, 2 John, 1 John, 2 Peter, 1 Peter, Hebrew, James, Hebrew, Philemon, Titus, 2 Timothy, 1 Timothy, 2 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians. I'm doing backward now. And then, Colossians, Philippians, Ephesians, Galatians, 2 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, Romans, Acts and Apostles, John, Luke, Mark, Matthew. Yeah, I can do it backward. Lah. Uh, try to do that. My confirmation class, I asked them to do that. They managed to do it, including the Old Testament. And you're so excited because next time you don't need, don't have one, so no problem. The Bible, anywhere you turn, you know what is what. By heart. Uh, and God speak to us when you do all this exercise. Uh, so I do hope that you continue to read the Bible and do the simple thing. Know by heart. And I'm sure God will bless us. Huh? The Word of God indeed is a lamb unto our path. Um, by doing that, God will bless us and guide us as we look at the disciples. All right, now let us pray and commit ourselves to God. And may God bless us. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for your Word. And because of your word, we are able to know who are your disciples, and especially Matthew, who wrote the gospel, the first gospel, and teach us, Lord, to have a heart like Matthew, perseverant, full of perseverance, endurance, and yet channel it towards the glory and also to the benefit of the kingdom. So bless us and guide us as we journey together. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Let us affirm, uh, affirm our faith together. Please stand. Together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit, and by the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Offertory and tithes will be taken. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of our own do we give you. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Beloved, the scripture tells us that our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. As Christ has taught us, let us pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Prayer of humble access. We do not presume to come to your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to get up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of a dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ suffered and died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us give thanks together in the prayer of thanksgiving. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of the Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. You shall not have the notices. The first PCC will be held today for the new term at 1.30 p.m. in room 6 and 7. Um, birthday for this coming week, Wilfred Tan, 21st, Zach Wong. Um, Zach is um, Pastor Peter and Susan Wong's grandson. 
on 21st. Stephen Chiang is 22nd, not 23rd. Vicky Go and 25th. Okay, let's say a short prayer for them. Dear God, today we bring before you those who are celebrating their birthdays this week. Wilfred Tan, Zach Wong, Stephen Chiang and Ricky Go, And pray for your blessings and guidance over their life. Help them to know how loved they are. Bless and protect them in the year ahead. May they know your peace and strength when they wake and your comforts and rest when they sleep. May their future be filled with your hope. Amen. Uh, in our midst, I saw I'm seeing two little ones because they're little ones to me because I knew them when they were very young. Magdalene and Anan, welcome back for your holiday. Glad you are with us this morning. It's always good to see those who have been abroad and they are back here with us for holiday. Yeah, little ones. <laughs> okay. Uh, over to Pastor for the closing sentence. Now, no more li little ones. Uh, they're all Leng Nui, Leng Chai. <laughs> so, welcome back. It's good to see people from uh, this place we have left and uh, overseas, and it's always good to see them. Uh. So, welcome back. Come back more often. Uh. <laughs> all right, uh, one more notice I want to just highlight the Sunday Coffee Corner refreshment. Uh, we already put up the chart. Uh, so far, we have some square fills up. Uh, please have a look at it and your special occasion, your anniversary, your birthday, or even just, just want to give thanks to God, right? just write down. Right? Uh, the breakfast you provide, or the, rather the lunch, the brunch you provide. Uh, what kind of... Uh, save the church some expenses. Lah. As I said, those of you who are not here before, uh, didn't hear this message, Last year itself, the account shows that for refreshment, the weekly refreshment last year comes to 21,000. 21, 21 eh? 000, eh? That's quite, actually quite a lot of money. We don't see it every week we spend on that. Eh? Uh, so if you can take maybe one family, one Sunday, I think it would help a bit. Lah. Mm? And as the saying goes, a penny saved is a penny earned. Mm? So if you spread out, I think it would be good. Of course, uh, if there's no square, it's, it's voluntary. If there's no square, the church will still continue to provide. All right? Uh, if you can kind of uh, fill up a little bit, then uh, church will benefit. Lah. And especially the building coming out, I think it will help a lot. All right? So have a look at it and uh, do what you want to do, what's necessary. Uh, of course, it's voluntary. All right? Uh, SJC praise done. This will be on this coming Saturday. It's on uh, 9.30 to 11.30, so if you want to participate, uh, please do come in here. All right, now shall we rise for the closing sentence? Then we shall sing the benediction. Lord God, the source of truth and love, keep us faithful to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, united in prayer and breaking of bread, and one in joy and simplicity of heart, in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now unto Him who is able to keep, able to give you from
peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. I believe it's timely as we end the service to just give thanks to God and also to commit again. Into your hand I commit again with all I am. For you, Lord, you hold my world in the palm of your hand, and I am yours forever. Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I belong to you. You're the reason that I live, the reason that I sing with all I am. I walk with you wherever you go. Through tears and joy, I'll trust in you, and I will live in all of your ways, your promises forever. Jesus, I believe. worship you. I will worship. I will worship you. I will worship. I will worship you. I will worship you. I will With all I 